Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us again this week for another crypto journey. We have Stephen McCaskill, Dasset CEO, joining us to talk about how to assess a crypto asset. Do your do do your due due diligence and how to mitigate risk um, and know what to look for. Over to you, Stephen. Today is an exciting presentation to uh, that's that's focused on assessing a crypto asset. And uh, this presentation is brought to you by Dasset, which is New Zealand's trading platform for crypto assets. Now, uh, before we begin, I need to make a few disclaimers. And uh, this, I think, is really important for, um, for everyone to understand. Uh, what I'm giving today is not financial advice. Myself or Dasset is not recommending that you purchase any of the assets that we talk about today. Um, and uh, we, we do not recommend that you invest in any of the assets that we talk about today. Uh, we are merely going to be going, uh, looking at some crypto assets and understand some ways that we can assess and review them and um, to get an, an understanding of what they do and how they work. So uh, all reviews in this presentation are for demonstration purposes only. Uh, there's so much uh, that changes with some of the projects that we might be looking at that uh, the information, the data presented in this presentation may be different uh, when you look at it if, or if you ever look at these projects again in days, weeks, months from now. Uh, there may also be other factors that we have forgotten about or not included in the presentation. So do not ex uh, expect this to be all encompassing. So uh, I, I really want you, you guys to make sure and, and understand that um, this is uh, purely for demonstration and educational purposes only. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, and uh, this is if you are out in the world and your Uber driver is telling you about a crypto asset, hey, you should check out this uh, token and uh, invest in it. Uh, always keep in mind that people have biases. So somebody is telling you that they should buy a token or they should look at a token, it's very likely the case that they own it themselves. So they're telling you uh, about it because they want you to buy it. And if you buy it, you might be helping the price uh, go up. Um, and so take that into consideration. If strangers tell you about crypto assets, if you read about a crypto asset online, that usually if somebody's telling you about that crypto asset, they likely have some form of stake uh, or ownership uh, in that project. The other thing to keep in mind is uh, what, what we're um, gonna review today isn't really looking at the price of an asset and um, isn't really something that professional traders or traders will necessarily look at. And the reason why is uh, oftentimes traders do not really care about uh, the fundamentals of a project. Uh, they can look or, or, or trade the, the worst um, project out there and they don't care. Um, if it's a project that's guaranteed to go to zero, traders don't really care. They're happy to trade it. Uh, if a project does not have a long-term viability, traders don't really care. Um, and, and oftentimes it's because they have an exit strategy and they see the volatility and they're happy to trade that volatility without really caring about whether the project uh, has any kind of viability. So uh, we'll, we'll, the, what we're looking at today isn't really going to be looking at the price, particularly since we've seen uh, a lot of, or most crypto assets are um, uh, very suppressed in price right now because of a uh, wide range of things from Bitcoin to the macro markets. So um, when we, what, so, so really the goals here are to help give you some tools to look at different crypto assets and assess them for yourselves. Again, this is not all encompassing. There might be things that uh, are missed here. And uh, so uh, hopefully if we can get through this, we can actually assess one or two crypto assets that are out there 
And um, just throwing it out there, if anyone has a crypto asset you want us to assess or look at during the presentation, uh, throw in some, some suggestions and we might uh, have time to look at one quickly, just so we can um, look at one that, that we've never looked at before, just so you can just go through the process with us. But uh, a lot of these factors are, are factors that uh, DASIT looks at in terms of whether an asset should be listed on DASIT. And a, a big reason why, it, uh, particularly around things like liquidity, uh, regulation, um, the team, the community, the, those are some big things that, that DASIT looks at because we want uh, to have projects that are not trying to um, uh, have have uh, malicious intent, such as pump and dumps, uh, or projects that are trying to um, purposely take investor money without any um, value add or a long term vision. Uh, you know, if Bitcoin didn't have that long term vision, then uh, it's something that we wouldn't have listed on our, on our platform. That's um, that's for sure. Um, with some caveats, you know, things like token issuance, um, we don't really necessarily look at that when when we're evaluating uh, crypto projects uh, for DASIT. So uh, I, I think as an individual, it is really important to understand what's now called tokenomics these days, but uh, things like the token issuance. So uh, diving into each one, and the first thing, this is first and foremost, uh, it doesn't matter what somebody else tells you, uh, you know, oh, you should go buy this token, uh, you, you know, buy it. Uh, the first thing you need to do is understand it. Don't buy it at face value because somebody else told you to. You need to really be able to understand what you're getting into. Can you understand the vision? Can you understand the goals of the project? What are they trying to accomplish? If you cannot understand, um, you know, if it all sounds gibberish to you, then maybe the project is something that you shouldn't really look into. Uh, if it's something that is extremely complicated and um, difficult for you to wrap your head around, particularly on the technological side, then see if you can break it down in chunks to. Uh, and if you can break it down in chunks and understand those chunks, then uh, that can help you um, break it down on a larger level. Uh, the other areas is ask people with technical backgrounds uh, for help. If, if you need help uh, understanding some of the technicals or technicalities, if it's something like lending, so there, you know, there's a lending project. Uh, for example, we have uh, lending uh, the, the token Aave on DASIT. So um, I think people have a relative idea of how lending works. You uh, have a borrower and a lender. Uh, the borrower is, is looking for crypto. The lender has crypto and is willing um, or, or dollars. Uh, so think about lending in the, in the traditional sense. Somebody has dollars. Uh, somebody has a car and they're lending it to you for a day. They're lending it to you um, for a month or a year, or you know, in the case of a mortgage um, or, or, or a long-term loan, might, there might be other stipulations. So uh, you might be able to understand lending, but the technology that's driving the lending platform might be a bit complicated. And that is where you need to rely on third parties, uh, if you're not technical, to uh, break down the, um, the technology. And that could be um, uh, between uh, audits, uh, public developers, and uh, talking to developers um, that you might know uh, in New Zealand or, or as, as friends. So um, another big thing to look at is, uh, is the project uh, still ongoing? Is, is uh, our people that are um, invested in the project, are they still trying to um, make it a thing? Uh, there are a few projects that launched in 2013 that were great ideas, but they came a bit too soon. And because of that, the development is, is no longer ongoing. And for all intents and purposes, although there's a token price, 
uh, I, I consider them relatively dead as projects. So great projects, great ideas, uh, but uh, we're likely going to see uh, new executions of these projects and ideas. So uh, it's really important to see what's what's happening today with that project. Uh, team. So team is usually important. Um, well, there, there are some caveats here, but uh, you, you kind of want to know who's involved in the project. Are, are the team members anonymous? Are they uh, people that um, have had previous experience? Uh, you don't necessarily want to look at whether they have crypto experience. Uh, have they had experience in what they're working in, in uh, before crypto? Um, because with, there are a lot of entrepreneurs or a lot of people coming into crypto that are working um, with developers and, and technical people here, and they have uh, a very strong background pre-crypto. Um, can, uh, can you engage with the team? So this is really important. Always ask the team a question uh, and see what their response is. Are they, uh, do they treat you rudely or are they happy to engage and answer your questions? Uh, this is really important because um, you uh, want to see how involved uh, the community and the team is. And, and um, it's, it's not really great if, you, if you're get, not getting a lot of respect from uh, people are participating in the project. So uh, this kind of leads on to the community. Um, always check out the community and see how engaging and involved they are. If the community and stakeholders are um, responding in a way that is, is very much a get rich quick scheme, then that's not a very good sign. So um, you want to see how invested the community is in the project. Do they align with the long-term vision and are they participating in helping the project get to that long-term vision? Um, the other thing, this is a bit different, but how toxic is the community? Um, and I, I bring that up because I, I've seen some crypto communities where rather than focusing on positive, uh, things that they might attack other projects and um, you know and and uh, rather than focusing on their own project and, and doing uh, um, creating that long-term value for their own project they are attacking or, or being hostile to other projects or and uh, other people which uh, doesn't really create a good atmosphere so this is really important um, always check discord telegram website forums um, and we'll hopefully get time to check one of them. Uh, also stakeholders, um, who are the stakeholders? Are they VCs? Are they individuals? Are they crypto exchanges? Are the stakeholders holding their tokens or are they selling their tokens? Uh, this is a really important question because oftentimes the ones, the projects that have uh, that long-term vision have stakeholders that are in there for the long long haul. Uh, so that's that's really important, uh, particularly the team. Is the team holding their tokens, the team uh, getting rid of their tokens? Uh, and then when you look at a crypto project, you have to use it. If you're not using it, um, you don't really know how it works. Um, try and, uh, you know, of course, there might be a project that is promising uh, utility and use in the future, so you can't use it today, uh, which makes it a little, little bit challenging. But um, if you can use it, try and use it. Um, if you see a crypto asset on an exchange, uh, see what they do, um, try and work with the project. Uh, if it's a lending app, uh, see if they're staking, see how the staking works, stake the asset. Um, try and borrow or lend on that project. If it's a decentralized exchange, do that exchange. Um, if it's a, a data project, try and use that um, data uh, or that they're, that they're offering. And so uh, it's really important that you try and use it. When you look at, uh, I, I think it's really important also to look at the on-chain metrics. So you want to look at who's holding the tokens on-chain 
uh, the activity of um, what's happening on chain. So uh, if you, there's a crypto project that uh, has a token, then um, how is that token being used? And what's the frequency? If more and more people are using that token on a regular basis, then you can see that there's a lot more utility for that token. A lot more people are, are utilizing it. Uh, so we'll, we'll do an on-chain um, check in, in just a few. Um, when, it, when you start looking at the long-term potential, that's where it becomes challenging and risky uh, because there's a lot of promises today, but you don't really know whether it's going to deliver tomorrow. And uh, a good example of that is uh, something like EOS, uh, where EOS was very promising as a project, and it's still around today. Uh, so, um, but, you know, looking at what was promised and, and what's, um, where they were going versus what, what's happened today, uh, a little bit of a, a, a different picture. And so it's, it's, it is really important to uh, keep in mind that uh, things change over time and uh, what's promised long-term um, is a lot harder to gauge because they might be over-promising things that they can't deliver on because the, the project might, um, uh, well, uh, here, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you a couple of reasons why in a, in a few slides. But the next thing to look at is the token issuance. This is really important. If you're looking at investing in a project uh, or looking at a project for long term, even if you are, are looking at trading the project, uh, I, I think that looking at the token issuance is really important. If a project has 100% inflation per month, that is huge. So that means the number of new tokens um, is doubling every month. That means that's an enormous amount of new supply coming in, um, in which creates sell pressure. And so that's something that you really need to factor in. What is the inflation rate of the project? And a good example of that is looking at Zcash. Uh, Zcash is a privacy token, and um, it's had a, a very long uh, downward trend since the launch of the project because its inflation rate is, has been really high uh, over, um, over the years. And so uh, it's really important to understand not only the inflation rate, but who the beneficiaries are and how, what are they doing with the token? Uh, there might be a token that has high inflation rate, but the beneficiaries are not selling. They are holding or um, uh, maintaining their tokens long-term because they see that future potential or viability. If you're looking at some of the projects that are lower risk, uh, that may have, um, longer term viability, but lower risk, then uh, liquidity might be a really important factor for you. Uh, and this is, you might wanna look at something like, how big is the market cap? Is it over $500 million? Where is it listed? And if you need to sell it, how easy would it be to sell that asset? So if you look at something like Bitcoin and ETH, uh, you can sell that anywhere in the world. Uh, you can sell that on many different platforms uh, like Adacit. Um, but if you see a token that just launched a week ago, um, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to go to a uh, regulated exchange and access that token uh, or sell that token. You're more likely than not having to go to a decentralized exchange to access it and um, what you want to do is, is make sure that there's liquidity there and, um, uh, and what is happening with that liquidity. Uh, you want to make sure that that liquidity is there long term. So in the event that you need to sell, um, you can sell it on that decentralized exchange. And there are a couple of ways of, of looking at that. Uh, and then depending on um, other aspects, you uh, depending on how centralized or decentralized the project is, you want to understand the legal jurisdiction. If the project's more centralized, you want to make sure that they have their ducks in a row, that they've engaged with the regulators, that uh, there is lower 
uh, legal or regulatory risk for that project. And so um, there, there are a couple of jurisdictions that make sense for some of these crypto projects to be um, registered in. And um, some of them are places like uh, Singapore, um, uh, Malta, uh, I mean, even some places in the US uh, are okay for registration. It does build a little bit more confidence for those more centralized projects. So um, this is something that you always have to keep in mind, unpredictable factors, timing. Uh, project might be the best idea in the world, it's just too early, too late, the timing might suck. Uh, there is some luck in a project succeeding. You always have to factor that in mind. There's just so many different variables. Um, personality differences between team members, um, that uh, has caused many issues in the past for many different projects, where projects have failed because two uh, of the team members have, have fallen out. Uh, macro events and regulations, these are completely unpredictable when looking at a project. So um, with all of that, what we're going to do is go into uh, some projects. Uh, so what we're going to look at, Star Atlas and Looks Rare. Please keep in mind, um, I don't believe either one's listed on Dasset, uh, but, um, and, and also just for disclosure, I do not own either asset. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and the reason why I brought these up is uh, so we can try and look at it from uh, an as unbiased perspective as possible. And so I'm not saying that you should buy or sell one way or the other. We're just going to be looking at some of the metrics that we went over uh, and see how we can understand what's, what's going on with these projects. So CoinGecko, CoinGecko is like CoinMarketCap. It's usually a, a great place to start where you can uh, start getting a lot of data. So once you find a project um, that you want to assess, um, what you want to do is find the resources. So uh, where can you go to uh, evaluate the technology? Where can you go to evaluate the utility? And um, the first thing I usually do is go directly to the source and find the documentation, find the white paper, and try and understand it. So right on their website, um, so Star Atlas, they have their website, went to their website, they have the white paper right there uh, where you can dive in and try and understand what the heck is the point of this token? Why do they have this token? Do they need it? Um, and um, what's the issuance? Uh, they might even have the team information here, and then we can go from there. So um, here is the token, uh, Atlas, I can see right here. So they're using it as the in-game currency. So. Um, can they use something like Solana as the in-game currency? Well, yes, they can. So that means, you know, there, there might be less of a need for this token, but if you think about it from a branding perspective, bringing um, the, uh, the, the user into um, this project. And so what this project is, is a game um, where the token is a, a, a used as currency within the game. Um, so when we start looking at it, what we see is the game hasn't been released yet. So um, there's no um, uh, game for the token to be heavily used. But on their website, there is a, um, a marketplace for NFTs. And uh, you can use the token today to purchase NFTs in the marketplace. So it does have a little bit of utility um, before the game has even launched, but uh, you're relying on that there will be a game in the future and that um, you, uh, you don't really know if the game is going to be good. So those are some of the factors that you need to take in when looking at the project. So um, just going through the docs, uh, the one thing I wanted to jump to was the tokenomics or the, the issuance of the token. And the one thing that I noticed is um, the supply is quite high for the first couple of years. So I think we're in year two 
And so 25% of the supply is being issued this year, uh, which is a substantial amount um, in, in terms of uh, how many tokens are being released. If you think about 100% of the tokens exist, last year, 36% of the tokens were issued. This year, 25% of the tokens are issued. And next year, 18% of the tokens. So that's a really, really high inflation rate um, or, or number of newly minted tokens. So if you're looking at this as a project where the project's being released in a couple of years and the inflation rate is really high, you might like the project, but understanding how many new tokens are being um, coming to market, being sold in the market, might help you decide, okay, this is a project I want to look at in a year from now, um, after the inflation rate slows down and closer to the time when the game might release. Um, so that those are some things that you might want to factor in. The other thing is looking at the different utility. So they are trying to implement all kinds of different things, um, such as uh, borrowing and lending uh, at gaming assets where the token would underpin that. Um, you, I believe, so I don't see the team here, but uh, my understanding is that the team that is involved uh, has, um, has has uh, backing or uh, both in, in crypto projects and gaming projects in the past. And so, uh, and they are all um, uh, docs. So, so everyone knows exactly who the team is. So what we're gonna do is go to the community. Um, we're gonna go to Discord, see if we can ask them a couple questions and uh, see what their responses are. So this is their Discord channel. So this is what they'll use for their community. And uh, so I'm trying to join. This is sometimes a, a tricky thing because they uh, are trying to stop the different um, bots, that kind of stuff. So now I'm in the community. So I can start engaging or I can start seeing what other people are talking about. So you can see um, their messages today. So the community is involved. Um, people are starting to uh, talk about different things. There's a town hall. So maybe in that town hall, um, I've already seen the inflation rate, but maybe I can uh, ask a question uh, like, what is the inflation rate of Atlas? And what I'm looking for is what's the response? Um, are people uh, asking or, or um, are, are they dismissing me? Or are they responding? Are they responding quickly? Um, how engaged are they trying to bring me in as a community member uh, so that I can um, participate? You know, are they they. So we're trying to figure out who the stakeholders are and who the, who the community is, and uh, see if it's worth uh, engaging with this project. The next thing I want to look at is the on chain. Um, and so if we go back to CoinGecko, what you'll find is there the token project's contract address. So um, this is a blockchain explorer for Solana. So we're going to look at the token and see, see what's happening. At least within the last hour, within the last few seconds, uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, transaction activity um, just within the last two minutes. Um, there's there's been a lot of transactions. So that's really good. Uh, some projects you'll see and there haven't been any use of the project in, in weeks. Uh, and so that's that's not good. That means that there's not much utility. So um, we're seeing that there's on-chain activity for this project. That's, that's a good si signal. Um, we're trying to see who the token holders are. Uh, some, some projects have a little bit better uh, insights than others. But um, this may give us an idea of who the largest token holders are and what, um, what's their activity and what are they doing. We have this, this address, we have how many tokens are in that address, and sometimes it gives you a percentage. So you'll see this top address is 59% of the supply. So these are tokens that haven't been distributed yet. Uh, these are tokens that 
are still being distributed over their vesting schedule uh, or distribution schedule, which we uh, saw here. So as you can see, 40% uh, of the tokens have been issued and 60%, um, 59.5% still have not been issued. Uh, and so um, there's, there's some good and some bad there. If 100% of the tokens have been issued, then there's not going to be an increase in the supply. But what we see is that 60%, 59% of the tokens still have not been issued. So that means that there will be a large increase of supply over the next uh, three years. And that uh, will put a lot of um, potential sell pressure uh, when those tokens are released. So that's really important to keep in mind. Um, some blockchain explorers give more insight into um, the names of these addresses. So right here, you just see an address. Somebody owns 8.9%. Well, it's probably the team or a big stakeholder. So um, sometimes you can ask uh, in the community, uh, who owns this address? And they'll tell you uh, who the owner of this address is. Uh, it is um, the, uh, the team's wallet, or this is an exchange wallet. So uh, if you're uncertain about a wallet address, it's okay, uh, that's really big, that holds a large percentage of the supply. Um, you know that they're a stakeholder. Uh, if they're a stakeholder, they're probably the team, or um, it could be an exchange, or it could be a, a, a VC uh, that's invested in the project. So um, we don't really know who owns uh, this token or uh, who owns this address. It could be the team, uh, it could be um, the uh, project. Um, and here we can see that somebody is actually, um, when we go back to their community, we see some people have posted uh, information about this. And so um, you can see uh, some people have been talking about who owns some of these wallets. This wallet that I just looked up is three, ah, is one of the owners. So it's one of the, um, one, one of the founders of the project. So it gives you a little bit more insight into who some of these owners are. And then what we can do is look at the address and see what the activity is. We can see if the uh, wallet coming or going. So the Solana a blockchain explorer doesn't really give too much insight into um, <laughs> where, where it's, if it's coming or going, but uh, digging into it can give you a little bit of a change uh, or, or an insight. So you can see they were selling the a little bit of the token and you can see the amount. And so you can see whether um, Ah, sorry, actually it's, it's um, the other way around. Yeah, so they, it looks like they're se selling some of the token. And so you might wanna know why they're selling. Let's look at the next one. Next project is looks rare. Uh, again, the first thing we wanna do is go to the documents. Um, find the documents, this is their website. Okay, so looking at their website kind of gives you an idea of what they're about. They're a platform for people to buy and sell NFTs. So I'm um, going to go to their about. Here are the documents. And these documents give you a little bit more detail about what project is about. So you want to read the, the um, project and see if you understand it. If you have an understanding of it, then you want to dig deeper. Here you can see how the tokens are distributed and the issuance rate. This is really important. So 12% were released when the token was um, initially dropped. Uh, they did raise some money, the, the project founders, 3.3%. Uh, so that was issued. Um, some of the team, they, the team received 10%, so, um, which is good. Do you want the team to have some tokens? Because that means that they are vested in the project. So now you can see the inflation rate where I believe where um, the, the project, I, I think, launched around December. 
So that would be day zero. So you can see how many tokens have been issued. So we're probably around, around here. So about 75% of all the tokens have been issued. Um, so most of the inflation rate is, is over from that perspective. Uh, so we still have 25% of the uh, tokens being issued over the next um, year and a half, roughly. So 25% of the supply is coming over the next year and a half. 75% have already been distributed. So that's, that's some good stuff uh, to look at. The next thing we want to look at, um, I'm just going to, oh, we, we see that they've done an audit. Um, you know, audits come with a grain of salt. Um, not all audits are created equal. So do you want to look at the companies issuing the audits and um, whether they um, have uh, a reputation um, providing good audits in the project? We're going to look at the on-chain metrics on this one as well. So what we can see, again, lots of on-chain activity, uh, less so than um, Atlas, but uh, also it's on the Ethereum blockchain, so transaction fees are a lot higher. So now what we're going to do is look at the holders. Here we can get a little bit more insight into who the owners and the holders are, because um, I guess Etherscan just has, has done a better job of providing us with information. So we know, uh, so we still have 70% of the tokens locked. Uh, so that was more than what I thought it was looking at the docs. Um, when we looked at the docs, uh, I assumed that about 75% has been released. Um, but here we can see that 70% of the supply is locked in uh, this token contract and by its name, you can see it's, it's um, still distributing tokens. So it's still quite a bit of tokens that are that are uh, need to be distributed. So here's a contract. Um, this contract, I'm not sure what it is, but my guess is this is their staking contract. Um, could be wrong. Need to look a little bit more into it, but uh, they enable staking. Um, the project facilitates the ability for people to earn the ETH uh, transaction fees when people are buying and selling NFTs. So from that perspective, it's a project that works today, that people are using today. We see that um, it has had many um, uh, um, users using it within the last um, hour. Um, we can see that it's listed on a number of exchanges. So 2% um, of the supply is in a decentralized exchange on Uniswap, 2% are on FTX, 1.8 on OKX. So there's a lot of liquidity on that's distributed throughout a number of different exchanges. Here's Poibi and Gate. Uh, so, and as you can see, some of the largest token holders are exchanges. That's people depositing crypto assets onto these exchanges. Um, some of these other token uh, contracts um, so uh, ha have different purposes. So they may that might be uh, distribution contracts like this one. Uh, looks like this is the one that people are involved in for splitting the fees that are generated on the project. So about 5% of the token of people are staking. Let's see if that's right. So you can stake the token. We can see 480 million tokens are staked and they're staked into two different contracts. So 227 million tokens and 253 million. So that doesn't make sense. So here's a, some things that aren't really making sense, where you can see uh, it says that 227 million Lux tokens are staked. That doesn't really make sense when um, we look at this and uh, we don't really see any contracts that hold that many tokens. And so, uh, you know, the question is, how can this many be staked um, when we look on chain 
we don't really see, we see one contract address with 480 million tokens. That doesn't really add up. So uh, not sure why these numbers don't add up, but that's something that I would be looking into. Uh, it says 253 million Lux tokens are staking in what they call standard staking. Uh, well, if that's the case, um, where are those tokens? Are those the tokens in this? Um, ah, okay, actually, here we go. 480 million staked uh, as a total, 480 million staked. Okay, so we can see this is actually the staking contract address. So this is where if you were to stake a token and you want to try it. So what you'd want to do is buy maybe one Lux token, connect your wallet and stake it. And then you would see your token going into this contract address. Um, so this is actually staked tokens. These are tokens that have already been issued. Um, so you can see 70% of token holders are staking um, to receive fees generated on uh, the platform. Uh, so that's really what the primary purpose um, or, or utility is for this token is to distribute re uh, revenue on the token. And there might be some governance involved as well. So uh, you might want to look and see whether uh, the token has some, some governance or uh, whether the token holders, um, what kind of say they have on the project. Um, here's something that's really useful. They are hiring a lot of people. So something you might want to look at is GitHub. And again, if you don't understand this technology, um, ask somebody to sit down with you. Um, you can at least start understanding that uh, here is where they are publicly pushing their technology stack. And you can see that there are updates. So developers are updating um, what's happening here and you can review what people are talking about. So this is a forum where people are um, submitting bugs or submitting issues. And so you can see what other people uh, have seen in terms of bugs or issues and what other developers are saying. Uh, so this is all really um, positive that the project's still in active development, that there's a lot of um, engagement uh, and use uh, on the project. Um, when we look here, we see there's 63,000 holders of the token. Um, it's had two and a half million uh, transfers. So all of these things give you a picture of, of how used this project is. And when you start looking at other, um, and start comparing this to other projects, it starts giving you a reference point that people are actually using this, where you'll find other projects that are selling a lot of things, but nobody's actually using it. So I uh, just wanted to see maybe there's a project that somebody wants us to have a quick two minute look at, um, maybe a project that we've never looked at before, just to give um, a feel for the project and, and look at areas where you may want to dig a little bit deeper to find the flaws. Um, and so if, if anyone has any Yes, we have um, Jonathan wanting to know about Red Fox. Red Fox, okay. Yeah. Let's look at that project. Um, Red Fox. Red Fox. Um, so, our Fox, uh, let me just go back to CoinGecko. Oh, yeah, rfox.com. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. We've uh, got it. Our Fox. Um, I guess they've oh. done a, a slight rebranding from, from Red Fox to our Fox. Mm. And so when we look it up, um, this is the token, our Fox. What we can see here, uh, we have a lot of information here. We can see the community. We can see the website. Um, we, we don't see uh, a GitHub. So we um, don't have easy access to um, some of their technology, but maybe we'll find that in other places. So uh, looking at the on-chain activity, we can see there are 9,600 holders. Um, so some things you might also want to reference is looking at things like the market cap. Um, yeah, so um, when we look at looks, so just let's go back to um, looks as a reference. So we can 
have an idea because you, you really want to compare apples to apples. And so Lux has $140 million market cap. R Fox has a $15 million market cap. So uh, Lux Rare is, um, at least in terms of its market uh, cap uh, size, is, is 10 times larger. So um, when we look at Lux Rare, 63,000 token holders, R Fox, 9,600 um, token holders. So not too crazy um, when we start trying to uh, look at comparisons. Um, so uh, if R Fox had something like 500 token holders, well, that would be a concern. Um, when we look at it, the on-chain activity, well, we can see, that, again, there is some activity uh, in the last 24 hours, last 12 hours, there, there have been uh, people utilizing the token in some way. Most of that use has been transferring it to an exchange or using a decentralized exchange. So it doesn't look like it's being used a lot for uh, utility um, on chain or at least on the Ethereum blockchain. So when we look at the token um, holders, we can see uh, we have 18% of supply here. 16% of supply here. This one's really interesting because this means the tokens actually on a few different blockchains. Uh, so it's um, a lot of the tokens are on a bridge. So it looks like there are a number of tokens on Binance Smart Chain. Um, it's being held uh, 7%, at least 7% of the supply is being held on Qcoin. Um, ah, here, here's 8.5% on Qcoin. So Qcoin is a pretty large exchange. Um, you can see 1.2% is held on gate, um, slightly under 1% is held on Bittrex. Uh, so you can see um, large exchange um, token holders, that means, and, and those are customer balances, so those are customers depositing, and um, sometimes market makers, uh, if the exchanges are invested in the project, then they may be holding the tokens as well. So uh, it really depends. Um, on uh, who who's actually holding it on the exchange. Um, usually exchanges will have a completely separate wallet. So this is uh, likely customer and market maker um, uh, tokens being held. So we can see, um, um, I'd say most of the tokens are, are probably distributed. Uh, it looks like the 100% um, of the supply, just not even digging into the tokenomics, um, looks looks to be distributed. Um, and then when we look here, kind of get that as well. Uh, sometimes you have to look at both um, coin gecko and coin uh, market cap to, to get an idea. So they're saying two, there's a total supply of 2 billion and uh, circulating supply of um, 1.3 billion. So 65% um, have been um, distributed roughly. Uh, and so this is where you might see the numbers are slightly different. Here it shows $20 million market cap, uh, fully diluted 30 million, but on CoinGecko, slightly different numbers. And so that's something that I might want to look into. What is the actual supply? And the reason why CoinGecko is saying a lot more of the supply is, is released. So they're saying that um, 1.6 billion are issued while um, uh, uh, coin market cap is saying 1.3. So maybe we can go on chain and look at that. You might need to look at another chain to, to see that. Um, so we'll, we'll check out another chain in a few, but for now, why don't we look into uh, the documentation or look into what, what they um, are seeing on their website. So of course, uh, building a metaverse for everyone, so that's uh, a very hot topic, um, showing where different exchanges where you can trade it. Um, so this is something I didn't really go into previously, but partners, looking at who's investing in, who are the stakeholders? Who are our, um, the entities that are involved? This is actually a good sign, Yield Guild, um, Yield Guild Games. The, uh, they are a um, guild project that, is heavily in, uh, looking at all kinds of different gaming projects. So uh, seeing them there is, is a good sign. They, they um, are, are pretty big in the crypto gaming space. Uh, so Hacken, they're pretty big too. 
Um, so looking at some of the, the partners, you might want to see exactly what their involvement is um, to get an idea. But uh, let's see, roadmap. No, we want to look at roadmap to see where they're going. So it doesn't look like the, the token has a lot of utility yet. So um, that might be important. Uh, has the roadmap been updated recently? Um, you, you definitely want to look into, into that. So they say that our Fox Vault, so shop owner portal. So it looks like there's uh, some place where you can actually uh, utilize the token. Uh, so you want to find out where the R Fox Vault is and, and see how it's how it's being used. Um, but let's see where we can find Black Paper. Okay, Black Paper. See the Vault economic model. So seeing if we can get an understanding of their tokenomics. So they have it. Ah, R Fox Team. Okay, so we can look at the um, tokenomics and the team. Um, so. Uh, 29. So team, team gets 12% of the supply. You can see it in this. So coin market caps off because, or at least according to their own documentation, 1.4 billion are in circulation, where coin market caps is 1.3 billion. There we go. So 17 and a half. So rewards for the ecosystem, that's that's generally good. So it look, doesn't look like it has a crazy uh, inflation rate. In fact, looking now, August, September, where September 2022, looks like 90% of the tokens are issued. Um, and most of the inflation has happened over the last year. You can see it was uh, quite, um, quite a bump between June and August. So there's some kind of vesting that was probably released. So you, you want to see what happened to those tokens. If those tokens went to investors, are those investors selling? Uh, did they dump their tokens or are they holding it? If they're holding it, that's a really good sign. And that you can do with a mix of uh, sleuthing on their um, uh, channels, um, their, their social media channels or community channels to see um, who, who those investors are and, and whether they're holding their tokens and might even be able to go and find one of their investor uh, addresses. It's likely, they're usually always the biggest one. So it's probably one of these in the top 10 and see what they're doing with their tokens. Sometimes it makes, uh, you, you just wanna go through all of them. So here's a big um, wallet address where they have a substant, they have over 1% of the supply. You can see the distribution. They received uh, a year ago um, 24 million tokens, and they're not selling them. They're not uh, moving them. That's that's uh, a good thing. Um, it's good and bad. At some point, they're going to want to sell uh, or use the tokens in the future. Um, and so, um, for, uh, so, so you, you know, there is that potential for selling pressure in the future. Um, this one's a Qcoin one, so you can see it's it's moving in and out pretty heavily from Qcoin, so that's an exchange one. Seeing if I can find another wallet address that might be, this is probably connected to the team. You can see very large in, no one's selling. Uh, that's in general, a good sign for longevity. Uh, if you see them trying to sell as many as they can, um, as soon as they get the tokens, not necessarily a good sign. So um, here you can see uh, so there's some transfers, ins and outs. So um, large transfers, ins and outs, you might want to figure out what this, this wallet is doing. Um, so, so yeah, so um, most of the tokens been issued. Uh, they have a docs team. You might want to um, look into whether this person's an actual person uh, and not a fake profile. Um, that's really important um, to do and make sure that these people are actually real. Um, and that might be through something like a YouTube video. Uh, oftentimes they have community engagement um, where you can interact with them or they do a podcast or a video cast. Um, you don't well, you want to make sure that they're not a made up um, uh, executive and uh, fake um, you know LinkedIn profile and that kind of stuff. 
you want to make sure that that is an actual person and they are who they say they are. So trying to join um, their community, We're running out of time, but uh, th that's the one thing that be useful is, is check out how engaging the community is. Uh, so, you know, they say that they have this token that's being used for uh, the metaverse, um, but they don't really say exactly uh, um, what its use is today. It looks like they have a lot of, ah, okay, so we have a vault. They have a lot of um, retail entertainment. So we want to figure out exactly what the token is being used for. So it's being used for a payment system. So they have uh, another system where the auctions are in ETH, uh, which you know might make sense for that, um, or you know the reasons for that. Um, you can see they haven't really posted uh, any news in the last uh, six months, so a bit quiet on this front. Uh, but let's go back to their community, see if we can get in and uh, talk to them. Today, somebody posted something there. As you can see, there's, there's a little bit of chat. Uh, well, general. Okay, yeah, so some people were talking um, about this vault, uh, which I don't really understand yet. So I, I need to spend a, uh, a little bit more time actually digging into this black paper that they call and to understand what the token is being used for. Um, payments make sense, but payments for what? Uh, is it a um, ecosystem that they're creating where the tokens are being, um, where gaming assets are being bought and sold on their platform? So is it like a Steam type um, uh, platform, which would make sense to me, but uh, I'd really want to understand what this vault is, so vault shop. Um, so it's uh, so I guess what they're trying to create is a virtual world where people can buy and sell things, uh, which they call shop. I don't know, physical or digital assets. Um, we want to figure that out. And uh, it does exist, but it doesn't look like it's being used heavily yet. So it's more of whether they can deliver on um, having something like this. So it looks like they're trying to create kind of a digital shopping world, uh, which looks interesting. Uh, I, I definitely want to dig a little bit more into that to understand the viability. But the other thing I'd, I'd want to do is, is understand their technology. So uh, what is the technology that they're using? Um, when it comes to metaverse and uh, gaming, you know, are they building something in uh, Unreal Engine or Unity, uh, which are the two contenders? Um, maybe ask them um, why they use or are going with one or the other. Looks like they have an office in Dubai that's uh, very positive. Uh, here's that mention about Yield Guild Games. Um, so some some good things uh, that you know, that aren't uh, making me uh, have red flags, essentially. So uh, for me, this seems like um, it's, it's uh, a complicated product. And so I really want to dig into it and read a lot more about it so I can fully understand the, the intended purpose of the token. Um, it's not an easy, oh, it's a lending application seems like it's a, a lot more immersive ecosystem that has a lot of different moving parts. And uh, I'd wanna find out what, what the core aspects of, of those are and how close they are. As I see, they have Metaverse launches MVP. So if they have Metaverse, um, I probably wanna go and check it out and see if the RFOX token uh, can be used in, in this uh, environment. Thank you very much, Stephen, that was great. Good to know yeah. what to look for, uh, yeah. When making that uh, making that move into crypto, yeah. So, um, so, so it's, these guys they, they show it, say they have a product. I'd like to try and dive in and actually use their product. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks, guys. And um, 
Again, there, there's many, many facets to looking at a project and a token. This isn't a five minute thing. I tried to do what somebody should be doing in um, six to 10 hours uh, within five minutes. Uh, so, you, you know, you want to look, look at those addresses, look at the technology, ask the questions, um, spend days uh, looking at those things. Um, so, uh, you, you know, what we did today is, is very much a, uh, not even a highlight of what um, you should be doing when assessing a project in detail. So thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next time.